Hey, today we're going to talk about what to do on an interview if you're asked about uh, gets and posts and how they relate to HTML and web programming. I made this web page at KillerPenguin.com. I'm the guy who owns KillerPenguin.com if you're wondering who that guy was. And this page has a get using this link and a post using this button. I also have Fiddler running. Fiddler is a tool that lets you uh, see the traffic going between um, you know, going back and forth between the server, so it should help us reinforce these ideas. So, what's the difference between a get and a post? Well, the thing that's the same is they're both ways to send information to the server. A get sends us information um, by putting it all in the URL up here. There's no information in a message body. There is no message body. It's just everything is in the URL. And so a git is totally insecure. Anybody can see the information passing back and forth. Uh, compare that with a post. A post actually creates a message body and puts the info you're trying to send to the server in that message body. It's not really secure, as you'll see in Fiddler. You can still see it, but at least it's not sitting there in the URL. Uh, another important fact is that a git is used only when you want to get info from the server, and getting that info doesn't change the state of your system. It's You could do it a hundred times, and it or a thousand times and it makes no changes to the big picture as opposed to a post when you use a post what you're doing is you're um, you know usually writing something to the database or deleting something from the database or you know updating something like that um, so that if you were to do it twice in a row it would you know well if you do it it makes a change to the state of your application if you do something twice in a row you might pay the same bill twice in a row right you don't want to do that. So let's demo it. Let's start with um, let's start with this git. Okay, so remember, I'm going to do this git, and all the info I'm sending to the server, which happens to be Google, is going to be in the URL. And we got puppies. Now look at this URL. It goes on and on and on with this ampersand equals. This is the name. This is the value. All this info is being passed. Um, in the URL. And we can see it here. Oh wait, I have to pick which one. So here we are. Uh, it's a git and it shows the URL we passed in. This tab here breaks it down a little better. We can see the name and the value name and the value. I don't know what all these values are, but that's what's being passed in. Uh, this shows us the message body, but like I said, it's a git. There is no message body. Um, let's compare that with um, the post. So, like I said, well, I'm going to type this in. It's going to send the info to the server, and the server is going to write back and uh, rearrange those letters, reverse them. Boom. Now, let's see what the post did here. See, this is a post, and it does have a message body. Remember the git doesn't? This does. And here's the values that we passed in. Um, text box and the value. For some reason they passed the button and I don't know why, but I guess that's important. Um, and here is that whole name value uh, relation again. But it's not in the URL. See, if anybody were to look at my URL, they wouldn't know what I just did. Um, Another important thing that you can mention about posts is that it uses something called URL encoding. And what that does is it changes strange characters, um, not strange characters, but things that aren't letters and numbers, um, into uh, the hexadecimal. Um, hold on. Hmm, sorry, I had to cheat there. Make sure I was telling you the right thing. Yes, hexadecimal. It's going to convert characters into hexadecimals. So let me give you an example of what that is. Um, let's say I sent in a question mark and an exclamation point. And I look at the message body. You see it changed that. Where is it? Oh, here it is the text box. It changed it into these hexadecimal values. 
now. Huh. Fiddler, fix that for us, but that's what gets sent in. Now, remember I said that when you do a post, it, it can change the state of your system, like the example was making a payment. Or let's say that you took money out of the bank. If you hit the refresh button, you would just take the money out again. That's why web browsers will warn you. See, I'm uh, you're doing a post, you probably don't want to do that. I'm going to do it anyway. And you'll see that it's sent in, let's go to the web form, uh, question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, it's sent the same thing in again. So if, I don't know, say you were deleting things, you would have just deleted something maybe unintentionally. So post tries to protect you from that. So to recap, um, a get is used when you don't worry about changing the system. All the values get passed in um, on the URL. There's actually a limit to how much you can, info you can pass in. If you're going to pass in a huge amount, you're going to have to do a post instead of a get just because there's too much. There's no limit on the message body. Um, a post, that's when you are making change to the system. It uses a message body. It uses URL encoding, which takes these characters and changes them to a hexadecimal. And it also gives you, a, web browsers will give you a warning if you try to refresh after doing a post. And I think armed with that info, you should be able to get past that question, unless you're like, you know, doing some really, really, um, you know, expert level web development, then, uh, then you should know this stuff already. You probably know it better than me. So uh, good luck.